It is never simple to bond with rabbits. The rabbits have a habit of complicated things before ultimately agreeing to cooperate. Because of the complexities of the bonding process, there are several opportunities for us, as mediators, to make mistakes along the route. From wrongly setting up their area to misunderstanding the rabbit's body language, we may be unwittingly making the bonding process take twice as long as it needs to. When bonding rabbits, we might make a number of errors. Don't feel bad if you've done the same. Instead, we may spend the time learning from one another in order to make connecting bunnies simpler for the next person. Starting bonding sessions too soon. Even though you may be eager to get started bonding your two rabbits as soon as you bring your new bunny home, this is often a mistake that can lead to extra stress for your rabbits. When you first bring your second rabbit home, I've learned that it's best to wait a few days, or even a week, before starting the actual bonding sessions. This will give your new rabbit a little bit of time to get acclimated to their new environment and de-stress a little. It will also give the two rabbits a little time to get used to the other's scent. During this time you will keep the rabbits separate, but give them a chance to interact with each other through enclosure bars. You may want to set up nose guards along the sides of your rabbit's enclosure so that if they get aggressive they won't bite each other's noses. Starting at the wrong time of day. The time of day that you start your first bonding sessions can be very important for helping your rabbits make a good first impression. If you first put them together in their neutral space in the morning or evening, when the rabbits will be most active, then they are more likely to get agitated with each other and act out aggressively. Instead, it's best to make those first few sessions with your rabbits in the middle of the afternoon. While it doesn't guarantee your rabbits will have a good first session together, this tends to be a sleepy time of day for rabbits. They'll be more likely to want to settle down and go back to sleep. In turn, this can end up helping your rabbits trust each other more right from the start. They need to have some trust in the other rabbit if they are willing to sleep around each other. Of course, before they are fully bonded you will want to make sure they have experience together during all times of the day. You'll want to know how they react to each other when they are more energetic. However, keeping the initial sessions in the afternoon start your rabbit's relationship off on the right foot. The space isn't neutral enough. When choosing a space to use as neutral bonding territory, you'll need to be careful to make sure the area is neutral enough that your rabbits won't feel any ownership of the area. This includes making sure there is nothing in the neutral space that might smell like either bunny. They must have made the bathroom smell like her. Because of this, that first session went poorly, the first rabbit might getting territorial and aggressive toward the new bunny. This is often more of a problem for female rabbits, who tend to be more territorial. While it's always good to take precautions, you can usually get away with a lot more when you are bringing a second bunny into a male rabbit's home. Not planning ahead with enough supplies. There are a lot of extra sets of supplies you need for bonding rabbits. You need a set of supplies for each rabbit's enclosure setup, and you need two sets of supplies for the neutral territory as well. This means having multiple X-pens, litter boxes, food bowls, hiding houses, and sets of toys available for your rabbits and their bonding locations. If you don't plan and order these supplies before starting the bonding process, you may find yourself paying a lot extra in shipping as you try to overnight the deliveries. Trying to multitask. Rabbits' demeanors around each other can very quickly go from 0 to 100. One minute the rabbits are relaxing and laying down, the next they're attacking each other. This means one moment of distraction from you, means you can't intervene in time to prevent a rabbit fight. As much as you might wish to use this time bonding rabbits to multitask and get some work done, it's much safer to keep a very close eye on your rabbits. This is especially true during the early stages of bonding. When your rabbits are still sizing each other up and getting used to each other, there is a higher chance that one of them will suddenly become aggressive. As you move to the later stages of rabbit bonding, when your rabbits are spending many hours a day together, you will naturally have more trust in your rabbit's relationship. You still want to keep an eye on your rabbits and never leave them unsupervised, but as you gain this trust it's okay to find other tasks that you can do simultaneously. Getting involved too often. As difficult as it is to stand by and watch, you need to let your rabbits work through their relationship. Obviously, it's important to be a mediator and intervene when your rabbits are acting aggressively, but many behaviors are not actually aggressive even if they appear to be. During these times, you need to take a step back and let your rabbits work through their relationship. Some of the behaviors that might seem aggressive even when they are not, include Chasing This is the most confusing behavior to watch since it seems like one rabbit is trying to attack the other. In reality, this is just one way the rabbit is trying to claim dominance. If the second rabbit is running away and not turning to fight back, then they are accepting the other as the top one. If the chasing goes on for more than 30 seconds, then it's time to break them up. The longer the chasing goes on, 
the more likely the second rabbit will change their mind and fight back. Humping. Humping is another dominance behavior between rabbits, and it can happen even between rabbits of the same gender. Like with chasing, you can let this happen for 30 seconds before breaking it up, to prevent the bottom rabbit from getting frustrated. Nipping or fur pulling. Not enough positive reinforcement. On the other hand, if your rabbits are showing a lot of aggressive behaviors toward each other or if either one seems terrified and anxious around the other rabbit, stepping in to give your rabbits positive reinforcement next to each other can help the relationship improve. Do this by placing your rabbits side by side or nose to nose, on the floor or in a box or carrier, and pet them side by side for 10 minutes. What helped the most was spending an hour with my rabbits just petting them next to each other, every time one would approach the other, pet them for a minute side by side. Then remove your hands, allow them to separate, and repeat when one approached the other again. This will help them start to feel that any time the two of them were close, he would be rewarded. It successfully helped him overcome his fear of the other rabbit. Not taking the rabbit's lifestyle into account. The problem with traditional bonding techniques is they don't take into account a free roam lifestyle. Since free roam rabbits are more and more common nowadays, this can lead to problems for many people trying to find a friend for their bunny. If you don't take this lifestyle into account, your rabbit is likely to get frustrated with the limited amount of space they have during the bonding process. Without making adjustments to the bonding technique you're using, your free roam rabbit will likely take out their frustration on your new bunny. Not cleaning thoroughly enough. When it comes time to move your rabbit back into their forever together space, you don't want to do a half-hearted job with the cleaning. Rabbits claim their territory and recognize their surroundings largely through their scent. This means, to successfully integrate your rabbits into their home, you need to erase any scent they left behind. To clean your rabbits area, I recommend using a vinegar cleaning solution. Add one cup of vinegar and one cup of water to an empty spray bottle and shake to combine. Vinegar does an excellent job at getting rid of any scent in an area. Use this vinegar solution to thoroughly clean your rabbits enclosure and exercise space. This means cleaning the floor, the pen fences, the furniture, and any other objects in the area. Take the time to be as thorough as you can to prevent your rabbits from being territorial when they are put back together. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.